Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor from Johnson County Community College, and the subject of today's short screencast is going to be problem solving. I have three problem solving techniques, and we're going to start by demonstrating those in Excel, and then we will apply those same concepts to JavaScript. So what I've got in front of us here is a basic little spreadsheet with three line items to fill the computer lab equipment budget. And so the problem that we're trying to solve is creating a formula that will determine our total cost for chairs, desks, and computers, considering the cost per unit, as well as the quantity that we're purchasing for that lab. So you might start right out in cell D6 here and build your formula. You know that the total cost for the chairs is going to be the cost per unit times the quantity. And so you may enter that in and get your subtotal and then copy your subtotals down. But wait a second, you've forgotten the tax rate. You might be tempted to go to this formula and build in the tax to break the problem down into smaller parts. And so what I would suggest you do is do another column, tax, and that tax then would be an easy formula. It would be the subtotal times the percentage for the tax. Figure out that number. I'm going to copy that formula down and it ends up being zero for desks and computers. And when we click our formula bar, we can see why the problem exists. It's because that reference to cell C12 is also moving as we copy that formula down. So let's go back to E6 and let's stick that formula using dollar signs in front of the C in front of the 12. Make that an absolute reference so that that's reference to cell C12 does not move. Okay, copy that down. Now we've fixed that percentage and we're getting the correct tax rate. And now we can do the grand total, which is another simple formula. Equal this plus this and get our grand total. So that might seem obvious to you to break out each piece of the grand total into its component parts, but so often I see people trying to put the entire formula or solve the entire problem in one step instead of breaking the problem out into multiple steps. The second suggestion is to test your values with what I call the reasonableness test. Well, it depends on the cost per unit times the quantity, and I cannot do that math in my head, let alone add 8% to it. So another suggestion is to come in here to the cost per unit and use test values such as, I'll go with two, three, four, and I'll go with easy quantities, 10, 10, 10. And I can quickly and very assuredly go ahead and multiply two by 10 is 20. And I can quickly do that math in my head and see that yes, those answers are reasonable. Let's go to a more complicated formula in Excel, and that is figuring out a monthly payment. The monthly payment formula goes like this, equal PMT, and then I'm looking at my little tooltip here. I put the interest rate in first, Okay, that's going to be 4%, comma, the number of periods a second, that's the term of a loan, 30 years, comma, and then PV is the present value. This is how much I'm borrowing, 100000 And so this particular problem happens to students a lot. They're trying to figure out a monthly payment, and they get a number such as this. So you're borrowing $100,000 perhaps on a condo or a business loan at an interest rate of 4%. And the term of the loan is 30 years. That would probably be a home mortgage, wouldn't it? And you're going to pay $5,783 per month. This answer is not reasonable. Break it down into individual parts to use test values and then also apply the reasonableness test. That is not a reasonable answer. To figure this out, you do have to have a bit of knowledge about how the PMT formula works. But basically, it works like this. If you want it to give you a monthly answer, you have to feed it monthly values. Using my break it out technique, I would probably build another column here for monthly values, and the monthly value of the interest rate would be the annual interest rate divided by 12. The monthly value for the term of the loan would be the 30 years times 12. So now when I copy my formula over, I'm getting a monthly payment of $477.42, and that it passes the reasonableness test. The reason it's shown in read in parentheses in Excel is because this much money came into your pocket from the bank and this much money goes out of your pocket. So it's a cash flow issue to the bank every month. Should you want to show all these values as positive, you just need to change the sign. Let's transfer those skills to what we do every day in our web development and digital media curriculum and that is JavaScript. So what I'm looking at here is actually project 3-3 from our current textbook. And so what the answer is supposed to do 
when I render this page is it's supposed to show the Fargo, Las Vegas, Sacramento, Newark, but it's not. Obviously, nothing is rendering here. And here's my unordered list with nothing in the elements because the JavaScript is supposed to generate that from this array. So let's use our break it down technique to try and figure out what's wrong with this. Obviously, you have other problem solving techniques that you would deploy as well, such as validation, the JS lint, and also the color coding of whatever editor you're using. But I'm just gonna apply these general problem solving techniques to give you more tools to solve a problem. And so one of the problems could be that my HTML is just incorrect. So I'm just gonna put some values here in the list items, save, and refresh when I can see that my HTML appears to be fine. So it's probably a problem in my JavaScript. So I'm going to look at my JavaScript. Really there's three sections to my JavaScript. I'm declaring a variable, an array variable, text items. I also have a function that's running and then I have an event listener that's running that's listening for when the page loads and running the process places function. So my problem could be in any one of those cases. But if you're like me, the first thing I just want to know is, is my code triggering? In this case, if you have an event listener, your code is triggering when that event runs, and it's the load event of the page. It's calling this process places function. So in order to figure out if that's actually running, I might want to put something really simple in my function here, such as document, write, and then just try and write something to the page. So I would want to comment out the sections of my JavaScript that I'm not wanting to test and just test this event listener. And just to test if this event listener is running this process places function, I'm gonna comment out everything in this function except for a document write statement. And I'm going to try and run it, this process places function from my event listener. So my event listener is not the problem. My event listener is running this process places function, which is running this one statement. So I'm going to take this statement out. Perhaps my error is in the function itself. Now that I know that the event listener is working, I'm going to test for pieces inside my function. Let's see if this statement is the problem. Instead of setting this equal to places i, let's write another statement that's a little bit simpler to see if my for loop is running. I'm just going to set it to i world and run and it works. So that means that this process places function is probably processing correct. The for loop is going through this loop. So evidently my problem is up here in my array. So let's not uncomment my array and see what's going on with my array. I've got Fargo, I've got Las Vegas, I've got Sacramento, I've got Newark, and I've got this city. And the problem now that I've isolated it down to the statement is I'm missing my final quotation mark. And so I'm going to save that and refresh my page. And I'm now getting the results I expected. Those three concepts of break it down into the smallest pieces, use test values, and ask yourself, are these answers reasonable? Worked wonderfully here in my JavaScript. Thank you.